This is the day that the Lord has made. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. We are here in the house of the Lord. Amen. We are with an innumerable company of angels. We are here with the with uh, uh, what we call that protocol of the scripture that where two or three are gathered together in his name, that he is in the midst. Yeah. So it, it, everything is possible today. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is your Thursday night edition of uh, House of Prayer Evangelistic Church Path to Ministry. This is our leadership training where we are dealing with uh, the apostolic advantage. I am your host, Prophet Ron Smith. Man, I'm just telling you, I'm so excited about the Word of God. I'm so excited about how God is developing us, teaching us, training us, and taking us to a whole nother experience in Him. Preparing yes. us for a whole nother season in Him. Yes. Hallelujah. We can praise God for the preparation Hallelujah. for a whole new time. I'm talking about being the body of Christ. I'm not talking about candy see. I'm talking about there is something going on in the spirit that God is getting his people ready. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what? I'm right in that line. Yes. Saying, Lord, here am I. Send me. Yes. Praise God. So we have been dealing with uh, uh, how the apostolic, one of the apostolic advantages, the advantage of having the apostolic anointing as the, um, the system your church functions under, praise God. I, I forgot the big terminology word that I like to use. It's called a paradigm. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the paradigm. That is the model that God has given us to make us into what he has purposed from the foundations of the earth. God ain't making plans on the fly. Yeah. He is a strategic plan to take us from one level of faith to another level of faith to another level of faith. And then guess what? Another level of glory to another level of glory to another level of glory. Hallelujah. This is all planned out. And, and it's important that we step into what God is planning and preparing for our lives. Yeah. And so we're talking about how the advantage is that the apostolic anointing sets foundations yes. for Christian lives and for ministry. And, and one of those foundations that we have found ourselves landing on is the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so today we're going to expand our teaching because we're talking about, uh, uh, we, we identify what the kingdom of God is, the kingdom of the heavens, the kingdom in general. We identified it. We looked at the phases of it. Uh, we looked at how this was the message that was preached, not just by Jesus and John the Baptist, but all the apostles that followed after. Amen. So we're now stepping into, there's still more to identify because we can now, we could look, we could go backwards and look at the kingdom of God in the dispensation of the law and the prophets. Amen. We can, we can do some more to discover. But we're going to move forward in looking at understanding foundations of the kingdom. Foundations of the kingdom. And so uh, uh, foundation principles of the kingdom. That's really what I want to say. I typed it in wrong. Foundations of the kingdom. But found, excuse me, foundational principles of the kingdom. What is the kingdom like? What is the kingdom about? You know, how is the kingdom functioning? Praise the Lord. And remember, we, we, we did say that we want to move from the mindset of church and the organization of church to the mindset of kingdom. Mm -hmm. See, this is getting bigger than what you got going on, yeah. your ideas, your thoughts, your likes and dislikes. You know, there's things, you know, I, I mentioned this before, there's certain things that I, I just don't like. I think it's disrespectful for you to come in the sanctuary with a baseball hat on. Mm -hmm. And you're a man. Yeah. Now that's me. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I'm not saying, thus saith the Lord, no baseball cap shall come in at thy courts. I didn't say that. But I'm saying that, that to me, that bothers me. But I have to move past what bothers me and get into the word of God and find out what is his command, what is his dictate, what is his mandate, what is his command, what is his yes. rule. Yes. Because we can, we can get in a church mode even though we're moving in the prophetic. We're moving in apostolic function. We're doing, we're learning these things and we're moving in higher dimensions. You can still become religious in that. Yes. Ain't nobody saying nothing. But this Bible is saying amen. amen. <laughs> because this is what happens as human beings. We get comfortable with the way we're doing things. That's and it. we have a church mentality. We have a four wall mentality. We have a me, myself, and I mentality. And not a kingdom. Come on. Jesus had to, to rebuke and correct his own, uh, uh, what they call the apostles of the Lamb. The twelve that saw him, the 12 that followed him, the, the 12 that was witnesses, along with 486 others, or 84 others, or 80, 40, 98 others, however many, 500 minus 12, that's what. That many people witnessed Jesus' resurrection. Hallelujah. What's to say that guy, uh, Matthias, that they, they chose, wasn't in that 500? So we're talking about principles. We want to have a kingdom mind that the kingdom is more diverse than we think. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now see, we, we got what they call, uh, because of where we live, Come we on. have a certain population that will has a tendency to become people we minister to and people we win to Christ and people we disciple. But the church is bigger than Kansas City, Kansas. Bigger. The church is bigger than blacks and Hispanics. Bigger. The church is bigger than what we're thinking and experiencing. But we got to have the kingdom mind that comes to us through the scriptures, through revelation of the spirit, that gives us an open perspective of all that God is doing or possibly may be doing. Praise the Lord. See, that's going to kill a religious spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, people of God, I just, I just want you to know, demons are real. They're real. And that's okay. We can disagree that, you know, a Christian can't have a demon. That's fine. I don't mind us disagreeing on that. It's okay. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. His salvation is only through Him. You must be born again. You know, as long as we don't disagree on that. But foundational thing, whether I believe a Christian can have a demon or not, is not going to uh, uh, determine whether I'm a true Christian. Come on. So we can agree to disagree. But let me tell you this. Demons are real. Yes, they are. So if you don't believe a, a Christian can be possessed by one, don't come under the influence of one. Yeah. Let me help you there. Okay? A religious spirit is a demon mm -hmm. that can set up a stronghold in your mind wow. and have you thinking not according to the ways of the kingdom, mm. but you can have a divisive way mm. of doing church. Mm. I've seen it. No, I'm not going to preach my experience. Let's just, let's just move on here. So understanding foundations or foundational principles of the kingdom. We're going to go to Mark chapter 4. Praise the Lord. I, I just, you know, I'm just starting to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes, that's good. Praise the Lord. If I got to close up this iPad, well, this is a teaching session, so I need to really teach. But guess what? If it's time to stop teaching, let's just fly around the room. That's what we want to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm trusting the Lord in that way. That sometimes God people need more than what you planned. Yes. We're talking about kingdom. Kingdom. Hallelujah. God is ruling and he knows all things. And through his spirit, we can come in contact with that knowledge at the moment. And so I have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. Praise God. That's a bonus principle right there. All right. Mark chapter 4. 
starting at verse 10, and our first uh, 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 thing that we want to share today is that the kingdom of God has been hidden intentionally and its principles. The kingdom of God has been hidden intentionally. We're talking about principles. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is hidden intentionally and its principles as well. We're going to read here Mark chapter 4 verse 10. It says, and when he was alone, talking about Jesus, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without or outside, all these things are done in parables. In other words, the, the teaching or the doctrine of the kingdom, the explanation of its principles, the revelation of what it is, is explained in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? He's talking to these disciples. And how then will you know all parables? So when we talk about that the kingdom of God has been hidden intentionally, God in his supreme wisdom. Listen, don't tell me you know everything about God. Right. You, have, you have lost your mind. Amen. That may be an evidence of demon possession. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a joke. But I'm just saying, you think you know everything about God when it's, the scripture says his ways are past finding out? You, we, we know in part, we prophesy in part. That's why within us our spirit man is groaning because one day when we see Jesus, we will know him as he is. Yeah. But right now we only know part. We only know part. And so the kingdom of God has been hidden intentionally by God. He has made it secret for his own purpose. Number one, we see here in the scripture that it was hidden from those who did not have faith in God. Those who were on the outside of faith and belief in Jesus, the Messiah, and his ministry. Those who would not repent at the preaching of John the Baptist. Those who would not come in uh, to fellowship with God through the baptism which represented repentance. It's hidden from them by God intentionally that they would hear it but not understand. Hallelujah. This is, this is God is sorrow. And one reason why God does this, and this is just me talking, is that God is not going to allow flesh to glory in his presence. God is not going to allow anybody by their own intellect, their own ingenuity, their own self-will and, and willpower to get, gain an understanding of his truth and principles, put it to practice, and, and, and do his thing outside of him. Amen. And John is saying, without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the kingdom is based on the Lord's spirit being in you before you can even start to be in it. Yeah. John chapter 3 lets us know whoever does not is not born again cannot even see the kingdom of God. You can't perceive it. You can't be a part of it. You can't know about it. Why? Because it's spiritual. But one thing I want to share here. Which is, which is enlightening to me is that not only did those who were without not understand or it was hidden from, but guess who's coming to him while he's alone? Is the, uh, the disciples yeah. and those who actually believe. Come on. So at the teaching of the parable, they did not understand the one they were following every day. Come on. Come on now, this is this is this is inside here. Yes, it is. So what is this saying? People that are, are apart from God have no idea about the kingdom of God. They can't get it. Yeah. They don't understand it. Yeah. 
You remember the, the, the Ethiopian eunuch as Philip was talking to him? He was reading the real books of the prophet. He had the genuine, authorized, canonized, but well, canonized, but we're going to say canonized books of the prophet, but couldn't understand what he read. Okay? And it, it took Philip, who was Philip of the Holy Ghost, to explain to him Jesus Christ from Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so what am I saying here? The, uh, the disciples and the soon-to-be apostles heard Jesus teaching, but yet they had to come to him and ask him, what in the world are you talking about? Praise God. So that means not only the people who are unsaved, but even us who are saved, there are aspects of the kingdom we don't understand. That's true. Yes. I'm talking about saved people. I'm talking about preaching people. I'm talking about prophesying people. I'm talking about people floating around, levitating, speaking in tongues, but don't have an understanding of some of the parts that God has to reveal about his kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My God. It wasn't that they didn't understand anything. Yeah. It was this that he was teaching. Yeah. Hear me clearly. Mm -hmm. This leadership training, right? Yeah. It was this that he was teaching. They could not grasp. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So God intentionally hides things mm -hmm. from Everybody. Praise God. Principles. Mm -hmm. Understanding of what the kingdom is. He keeps it covered. Mm -hmm. Praise God. All right? That's number one. I think that's clear. We got that? Yeah. All right. Number two. The kingdom of God has been hidden intentionally. But it's purposed by God to be revealed. Okay? So it's hidden, but God has a purpose in hiding it to reveal it. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I think about, you know, kids. And, you know, if I was a kid again and I had parents, I would like for them to put the cookies on the low shelf. <laughs> you get me? Yeah. Yeah. Now you gotta go get the step ladder. You gotta open the cupboards. Uh -huh. But you can get it. You can get it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Make it. Play. You can get it. Yeah. But in the jar is only like three cookies, and the rest of the package they got in the top of the cupboard that's locked. Yeah. Come on, I'm talking about God here. <laughs> See, there, there is hidden, but there is an intention for you to get it. There is an intention from God for you to get it. Let's read the scripture here. Mark chapter 4, verse 21 and 22. We got a reader? Anybody want to read? Mark chapter 4, verse 21 and 22. Huh? Passion on. He also gave this parable. No one lights a lamp only to place it under a basket or under the bed. It is meant to be placed on a lampstand, for there is nothing that is hidden that won't be disclosed, and there is no secret that won't be brought out unto the light. Hallelujah. I like that translation. Now let's 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 talk about this. What is a parable then? Okay, we know the traditional thing that we say. But I want to put this out here for us to think. Okay? God is hiding principles. He's hiding understanding intentionally. But there is a purpose to reveal what's hidden. That's where we at. So when we talk about a parable, a parable, when we look at it in its truest sense in the, the Greek here, it's, it talks about a comparison. A comparison. So there is a story that goes alongside, parallel to the truth, that if you get, you get the story 
it's a possibility that you can get the truth. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So it's a comparison. It's a it's an analogy yeah. that goes right alongside a principle of the kingdom in this case. Yeah. And so as as our dear sister read it, he spoke to them in another prayer. Now, see, this is how God, God is, is, he is sometimes like, okay, God, what is going on with you? <laughs> because they came to him asking him to explain the prayer. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. We got a problem understanding prayer. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. Now, who, who else is in this group? Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. The inner circle is a part of the 12, correct? These are the ones that seen him exposed on the Mount of Transfiguration. These are the ones that laid his head on his breast. These are the ones that, that he made, you know, pretty much the head apostle of the church. Yeah, come on. But right in the crowd of them that didn't understand was the one that's closest to him. Mm -hmm. That's good. But when they come back and he's giving them an explanation of the teaching, he comes with another parable. Mm. <laughs> I'm telling you, there is a scripture that says, you are strengthened, and I'm just kind of paraphrasing this. You are strengthened to operate in certain things when you exercise what you have. My God, that's good. You're strengthened to operate in certain things when you exercise what you have. Yes. Listen to me. So he comes back with another parable because I'm not going to make it totally easy for you. So he comes back with another parable. Listen to the parable here. So the kingdom of God has been hidden intentionally, but it's purposed by God to be revealed. If God just lay everything in your lap, you're going to become a lazy old putty tat. <laughs> That's what you're going to be. I don't want to be that. <laughs> you know, there was a time in my life where, you know, I was growing in faith. I just flipped my Bible over. Prophetic word. Mm. Okay, Lord, okay. And you shall be like a green olive tree in the house of the Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus. You know, I just close my eyes and put my finger on it. And there's the word of God. But guess what? He's not doing that today. I can do that all I want to. It'd be like, you shall die. <laughs> oh, Lord, no, that is not, no, that is not. You know what I'm saying? He's not doing that. Hello? Yeah. You flip the Bible open and there's something crazy. Mm -hmm. Song was silent. Mm -hmm. Talking about breasts or something. Wow. You know? Yeah. Listen, God is not making it easy for us. Yeah. Especially talking about leadership. Because you're going to get so comfortable and lazy that you miss the whole principle of the kingdom. Ooh, wait, I'm going to get to that. But so, so here's the parable. It's purpose to be revealed. What is hidden is purpose to reveal. He said to them, is a candle brought to be under a bushel? Mm -hmm. In other words, if I brought a candle in a dark room, why did I bring it here? To light up the room. Thank you. The whole reason I brought it is for you to see. Yeah. Let me keep reading. I hope y'all getting revelation right here. Huh? <laughs> Listen to what it said here. Or under a bed, is it not to be set on a candlestick? Mm. Let me tell you what he's saying here. All right. So he's saying, why would I even speak something in the earth and not let nobody understand it. Mm, come on. That's good. I'm speaking it to hide it from some, but somebody else is supposed to get it. Come on. That's good. Yeah. If it wasn't, listen, why come 
in here, he don't have the day or the hour he's returning. Yeah. And I'm saying like in a riddle or something. Come on. Because it ain't for nobody to get. So he's not saying it. But if he says anything, no matter how dark to say it, no matter how puzzling the riddle, no matter how many symbols and things is in there jumbled up, it's for someone to understand. Yeah. It's purpose to be revealed. Verse 22, for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifest. Yeah. Neither was anything kept secret but that it should come abroad. Yes. All right. Now let's look at some. Let's look at some Greek words here. So when he said there is nothing hid, this comes from the Hebrew word. I mean the Greek word kruptos. All right. I'm not gonna say it like the Hebrew people because I'm not Hebrew. You're supposed to roll the R. I feel weird doing that, so I'm not gonna do it. All right. Kruptos. All right. Now this means. And you can write this down. It means something hidden, something secret, something inward. Uh-oh. I want y'all to circle that word inward. Now, let me just say this. Anytime that you are, you are going back and, and looking at the Greek and the Hebrew, this is something you have to be careful of. Okay? Now, they will give you in the, the uh, lexicon the meaning or definition. Mm -hmm. Then they will give you the usages. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, this word is used in these cases. All of them cases don't apply to the scripture you're looking at. Right. And so, you want to be careful. Don't just, ooh, that one sounds the best. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that definition because I can dig a whole lot out of it. But it don't fit the it don't fit the context of what you're talking about. So you got to have some type of biblical understanding where you can understand context. It's not human reasoning, but it's just understanding. Okay? And so so when we talk about this word inward, listen, when it's something hidden, when it uses the picture of the candle. Is inside of a bushel. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just remember, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you with something here. So there's nothing that is hid which shall not be manifested. Now let's look at the word manifested. This comes from uh, the, the Greek word phanero. All right? Now this means to make visible or to make clear. Okay? graspable, uh, uh, apparent, all in the synonyms. So it's to make something clear, to make something visible. Oh my goodness. And so there are things that's already deposited inside of you that God wants to reveal. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He hid it in you in a time-sensitive safe. Hallelujah. A time-sensitive package. Thank you, God. That, you know, uh, like Christmas present. Don't open till July, uh, 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 December 25th. Yep. Yeah. There's things in you that is like that. But it's intentionally been hidden by God, not for you not to know, but for you to, re to be revealed to you at the proper time. At the proper time. Man, if God really showed, I'm going to tell you, one time I was, I was, this was early in my salvation. I was saved, born again. And I was tempted to buy in a gas station a cherry, uh, the little cigars. Like with the little plastic tip on it. I can't remember what they call it. I must not need to say it because somebody's going to be tempted. Yeah. But I, was, I went in the gas station and I was like, ooh. And I was just going to ask the man to give me one of them. And the Lord said, what's he going to say when he see you on TV? Ooh. Whoa. A 
Oh, give me 10 on number one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Ah, oh, ain't no way in the world. No oh, way. way. <laughs> no way. Because what God was, what he was showing me, he gave me a vision of myself being publicly known as his preacher. Yes. I didn't see myself like that, brother. I didn't even see it. He made it I didn't even have that perspective. I'm way out here in Old Lake, Old 56 Highway. Yeah. Right. Out of Go Chicken Go, going to get me a cigar. I'd have worked hard in the factory. <laughs> and the devil tempted me. Mm. But God had something inside of me. He said, I'm going to save it for this moment. Because this revelation is going to get you to where you need to be. Yeah. Man, there's no way in the world. And I was never tempted again. Because yeah. what, what was inside of me was opened up by God. All right. So we got number two. The kingdom of God has been hidden intentionally, but purposed by God to be revealed. He hides it so he can show you. Mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. You know what? This is, this is another kingdom concept right here. And that is not being so satisfied with the outer successes of overcoming sins. Come on! You know, so many people, this is, this is a pit stop to religion right here. Thank you. Now, Lord. let me just qualify my statement. When we talk about religion, we're talking about the type of religion where it breeds self-righteousness. I'm not talking about, you know, reading your Bible every day, going on a fast and praying. Those are, you know, it's a duty that I'm doing, a spiritual duty. So some religion is good. Take care of the widows and the orphans. That's, that's pure religion, undefiled. But what I'm talking about is the negative aspect of that because you got a couple scriptures you done memorized and you wearing a suit with a white tie and a matching white shoes and you got a title, you think you all right. And you look down at your nose at the perfect person got on sweats. Yeah. That's on. religion. The kind of the kind of the kind of lifestyle that pushes God out because we're not going with God. We're going with our system. Mm, mm, mm. No, nope. well, next we're gonna have prayer. Next we're gonna have this. No, we're not gonna have two songs. We're gonna have one song because we need this and this to happen. <laughs> That pushes God out. But what if God said, I don't want no song. I want everybody on their face weeping, crying, and repentance for the sins of the world. Yeah. Oh, no, God. It's, it's 1145. It's time for the preacher to come up. <laughs> well, what is he going to preach? When God said, get on your face and cry about for the sins of the world by way of the Holy Spirit. What are you going to preach? Come Today's on. message is Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. But I'm just, I'm so serious. You're making it plain. I'm serious. Thank you. You can preach truth out of the scriptures and not be in the spirit. That's yeah. real. It's true. Yeah. But is that what God is saying? He said that. Right. But is that what God is saying? Right now. They that are in the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They that are in, are in the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. So in the real kingdom reality is, I'm not just satisfied that I don't do the, the top ten do's and don'ts. I want Jesus. I want his spirit. I want the supernatural. I want to hear from God. I want to be all that I can be. So what you ain't smoked in 20 years? Yeah. You thought about something. Come on. My God. Okay, y'all. Number three. So we understand number two, right? Yes. Yeah. He wants to reveal. Okay? 
Let me, let, me, let me just read that scripture one more time and make sure. There is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Yeah. Yeah. So God has intended that all that he has spoken through the kingdom, not that you as an individual get it all, but somebody will get it. Somebody. This is why he made the kingdom so diverse. I should be able to receive from anybody in the kingdom because God intended for him to reveal something to me that he didn't intend for me to get the revelation, but for me to get the understanding from him. Yes. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on then. I think we got that. Number three, a foundational principle, okay, is the understanding of the kingdom comes by way of revelation. Yeah. Okay? This is a principle. Okay, well show me the scripture. No, it's hidden. It's, it's the scripture within the scripture. Scripture within the scripture. Listen right here. The foundational principle is the understanding of the kingdom and its principles comes by way of revelation. Let's go to verse number 14, same chapter. So remember, he gave the parable and they said, they said, man, can you help us with that? Mm -hmm. And he said, now, you mean to tell me you don't understand what I said? Mm -hmm. Now look at God. Look at, look at the Lord. He is going to check you <laughs> to see if you are carnal. He's going to test you to see if you're a pretender. He's going to test you to see if you got pride. He accused them of something to test them. He said, now, how, since you don't know this, how are you going to know all the rest of the parables I'm teaching? It's right there. He left them bewildered like, oh, my God. But once he did that test, see, God was going to put you to the test, y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I know the next place we're going is we're talking about the character that's necessary to function in public ministry. Mm, that's good. We're going there after we deal with this, these foundations. Yeah. But God is always going to try you. Because sometimes he wants you to see you're full of pride. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You are. Yeah. You are so arrogant. Mm -hmm. You're so arrogant. Look at you. Just look at you. Look at yourself. Hey, man, he pull you out your body and let you see you preaching. Mm -hmm. Look at you. Now, why'd you do that? Mm -hmm. And you, phew, oh, my goodness, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> this, you know, God tries us. It is to perfect us and to bring us into perfection. So after he put that out there, he then begins to give them revelation of the parable. Mm -hmm. Verse number 14. He said, listen, the sower is sowing the word. The word. Man, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about the word is the critical element of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my God. Listen, books, get your books. John Eckhart. Get your books. Uh, um, the Dave Ramsey. Get your books, Juanita Bible. Get whoever your favorite, what you do, read it. But you better keep that Bible. Keep yeah. the Bible. Yeah. Don't let the book become your Bible. Let the Bible be the Bible. Yes. The word is the most critical part of the kingdom. You can't even come into the kingdom without hearing the word. Yeah. That's before the spirit. Mm -hmm. Faith is before faith. Mm -hmm. It's the word. The word. So he gives them he gives them revelation of the parable. He said the sower is the word. And then he tells what the word is sown in. It's sown in the hearts of people. Mm -hmm. And he explains all the different hearts, right? Mm -hmm. And he gets down, I will read it, but we lack time here. 
verse 20 of Mark chapter 4. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it. And they hear it, they receive it, and bring forth fruit according to what their purpose to bear. Mm -hmm. Do we get it? Mm -hmm. So understanding the kingdom comes by revelation. He knew that they was not going to be able to uncover what was hidden without him, Jesus, the word, revealing it. So guess what? Then he comes with another parable. Okay? So let, let me just share this with us. If it takes revelation for us to gain understanding in the kingdom and the principles of the kingdom, how it operates, once we begin to gain an understanding we learn the process of how God reveals. We learn how God reveals. It started with them doing what? Asking. Asking. That's good. It started with them asking. Well, I'm going to get this such and such oil from, uh, get this oil from Israel. <laughs> and I'm going to get these certain prayer cloth. And I'm going to get a pillow with the scriptures on it. Then I'm going to make me an altar. Listen, you can be in a grocery store. And if you need understanding from God and you sincerely ask, that is the process to you gaining the understanding. Mm -hmm. This is not magic. The kingdom of God is not magic. Magic is forbidden. Yeah. Magic is abomination. And some of the stuff that we're doing, we're counting on magic. Oh, man. I don't care who gave you the prayer cloth. Come on. Amen. Not saying God can. And he can impart through a prophet and apostle. He can do all those things. I'm talking about your perspective. Your perspective. It's not the pillow. Mm -hmm. It's not the, the uh, uh, somebody tell me, with the zit zits. What they call the thing with the zit zits? Talits. It's not your talits. <laughs> Praise God. It's not your ornaments. Yes. They, they have a, they have, listen, when God, when, when I was uh, consecrated to the office of a prophet, the, the apostle that was prophesied to me when they laid hands on me, he said, where, wear your calling, he was prophesying to me, wear it like an ornament, wear it like an ornament, wear it like an ornament. And I went on the internet and I bought me this red, y'all seen it, I was wearing this red uh, prayer thing with my camo. And it was an ornament to me that God has called. It represented fire, it represented deliverance, it represented protection. But guess what? That prayer shawl did not get my prayers answered. That prayer shawl did not allow me to prophesy. That prayer shawl did not turn on the gifts of discerning spirit, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. It was the Holy Ghost in me and my surrendering and my seeking of him to turn on the things that he had hidden inside of me. Yeah. Come on, I hope somebody gets something. I'm digging, I'm digging deep today. I'm digging hard. <laughs> okay? It comes by way of revelation. And so, the word revelation is the Greek word apocalypsis. Okay, let's define that. Apocalypsis is, talks about an unveiling. Praise God. Uh, it is a spiritual manifestation of Christ and his will Hallelujah. that's previously unknown. Because it's veiled or covered. 
And so the revelation is God unveiling or uncovering or manifesting Christ and his will. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Y'all need me to repeat that? Yeah. yeah. Okay? It is, it is, uh, apocalypsis is unveiling. Yeah. Okay? It is, it is uh, uh, uncovering or manifesting of Christ and his will. Hallelujah. When we talk about revelation in the Bible, primarily that's what it's referring to. Christ, Jesus Christ, it is who he is. We got a whole book uh, uh, at the end of the Bible called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so he is being uncovered that he is God, that he is Lord of Lords, he is King of Kings, he's the creator, and he's in control of all this, and he's going to kick every one of his adversaries behind. Amen. And he's going to burn up the devil and every demon spirit that rebelled from their first estate and every human being that was tricked and submitted by rejecting him and submitted to the devil's lie, they're going to burn right with him. And he is going to judge them by fire according to the works that they have committed and what is written down in the books. Mm -hmm. It's revelation. Yeah. And so likewise, there are things about the kingdom and about its principles and about its operation and about what it is that the Lord will unveil yes. to us. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay? So it comes by revelation. Let's go to the next point here. I got 10 minutes. Receiving revelation is based on taking heed to what you hear. Yeah. Let's go to, uh, let's, we stand in chapter 4 of Mark. We're going to go to verse 23. All right. Now we're going to define that. I didn't put it on the paper, I don't think. Okay, let's just go. If any man have ears to hear, let him what? Hear. All right? Okay, let's just stop there. If any man have ears to hear, and we did a whole study on this, about the types of ears you can have, and, and what helps you to be able to hear God's voice, spiritually. All right? So you can go back, and it was on the path to ministry, you can go back and look at that if you need help on that. But he that has ears to hear, use what you have. Put it to use. Be a steward of that. See, so many times we have, we have gotten relaxed with our spiritual place. Yes. We had got comfortable with, okay, I've heard from God. Okay, but how much have you heard from God? To what extent or to what degree have you heard from God? That's good. You know, the other day I was in prayer and I had been seeking God concerning angels and, you know, man, listen, I, I'm, just, I'm just wanting everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was in prayer and I had a vision and it was, it was very clear. And it was, it was people I know and, and everything. And it was real clear what was said. And I was like, wow, I, put, I wrote it down because I'm a good steward of hearing the voice of God. There you go, right there. Here's a principle. Write it down. If you're, not, if, you, if you're hearing, you're not really using what you got if you don't record it. Yes. Oh, I just heard from God. Then you go start drinking coffee and eggs and <laughs> ham and all that. <laughs> then you can watch a, 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 a YouTube videos and you can scroll through Facebook for an hour and 45 minutes. And you go back and like, man, what did the Lord say? <laughs> now I saw a white, something was white. <laughs> now, what was that? Man, listen, you're not using your faculties correctly. Mm -hmm. You're not being a good steward of what you have been given. Yeah. He that has the ears to hear, let him hear. Listen to this. And he said unto them, take heed to what you hear. Okay? Now what does that mean? 
what you hear, do something with it. Come on. Do something with it. Listen to the, 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 the word for take heed. It means this. Be observant. Okay? It means to see something physical, but end up with spiritual results. Write that down. To see something physical, but to end up with spiritual results. Observe. Listen. Pay attention. Respond. Be alert. Beware. This is all it means in, in take heed. Did I go too fast? Okay, listen to me. This is the key right here. Be observant. It means to see something physically, but have spiritual results. Okay? So, when I, I take heed to what I hear, I hear the Lord. So, I need to record it. Yes. I need to rehearse it. I need to listen to it. I need to research it. But say, oh, I heard from God. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you wanted? Okay, now what, what is that supposed to do in your life spiritually? Yeah. I'm just saying, what God gave you, let's just say he gave you the hot dog. All right? So I'm celebrating I had a hot dog. Dropped it on the ground, now boom, gone. You didn't even get, get to eat it and put it to use. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Give heed to what you hear. Listen to this. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. Now, let's, let's, let's define something else here. I got something here. I don't have. So let's write down this word. Measure. This is going to bless you right here. I got eight minutes. Measure. It says, take heed to what you hear, which means what? Be observant. Yes. What else? See something physical and end up with a spiritual result. Right. That means do what you're supposed to do with it. Yes. Turn it into what its purpose to be in your spiritual life. If God's talking to you, it's supposed to be to go to something, to bring some result. Amen. Amen. Okay? And so, so he says, in the same context, we're talking about what you hear, with what you measure, with what measure you measure out, it will be measured to you. So let's, let's define measure here. It is from the word metron, M-E-T-R-O-N. Okay? Probably this means the actual measure itself. Okay? What it determines is what is enough and what is not enough. What is enough and what is not enough. So if I got a tape measure and I need something to be two foot and I stretch it out and it goes to 19, I'm sure, right? Because two foot is 24 inches. So I'm sure five inches. That's measure. Mm -hmm. Okay? What is enough? What is so he's saying with, with what you measure, how you measure, this is the measurement that's coming back to you. Mm. So with what you consider is enough concerning what you hear, that's the level you're going to get. My God. Mm, mm, mm. That's the level you're going to get. Woo. Let me share this for prophetic people. If you're just so happy that you prophesied to somebody, that's all you're going to get. My God. That's just for prophetic people. You are so happy that you got a word of knowledge from somebody. That's what you're going to get. You're not going to move no further. Because see, this is, what, this is what we see. Now, I didn't get off, but this is what we see. We see God is just going, <laughs> prophetic. 
It just going just and then you just floating in the wind and you see everybody's business. That's not how it works. Right, come on. Now that's how it may work for somebody, but that's not how it works for everybody. There's some people that just got that. A tornado in their spirit. Yeah. <laughs> they see it everybody's business. <laughs> That's not how it works. Not how it According works. to the measure that you say, this is enough. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's coming back. Yeah. So if I say, God, thank you for allowing me to give a word of knowledge to help this dear sister to get out that relationship with that man. But I want to minister to everybody. I want to help all those that's in need of help. This ain't about somebody that, oh, he's perfect. That's stupid. I'm just saying, that's a baby mentality. He even say that when you give your gifts, man, when you just give it to somebody, say, oh, he gave a hundred dollars. That's all you give. Yeah. I ain't going to give seed to you no more. Mm -hmm. That's your reward. I give seed to the sower. The person that sowed the right heart and wants to help, you get another hundred to give. Yeah. I might switch you to the thousands. Yeah. We're the same way in the prophetic. In the prophetic. Don't be satisfied with, with that. Yeah. Don't seek to be recognized by people. Seek to help somebody. Okay, that's a kingdom revelation yeah. right, there. right there. Hallelujah. That's a kingdom revelation. And it came from 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 6 from Ebenezer to Ashdod. It's a revelation. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me move on. So, take heed to what you hear. Okay, let me keep reading. So we said, the measure you meet, it will be measured to you. And unto you that hear, listen to me. Unto you that hear shall more be given. Yes. Do you get it? Yes. So this is kingdom principle. Don't be satisfied or put a me your measuring rod out so short. Mm. When it comes to receiving revelation and understanding from God, his word, his kingdom, his scripture, his, his prophetic voice, all of that. I want it all. Yeah. I want to teach. I want to preach. I want to prophesy. I want to levitate. I want to fly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm dead serious. Yeah. Boy, I wish I could pull my face back and let you see <laughs> in my spirit how fiery I am yeah. about what the scripture is saying. Yeah. You satisfied? Oh, I had a dream. I'm not just satisfied. I want to know what every single detail of this dream means. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. So God is going to bless me. Okay, it's more in there than that. Yeah. How is he going to bless you? When is he going to bless you? How, which way is it coming? Was he talking about ministry? Was he talking about marriage? Was he talking about, what was he talking about? Yeah. I'm just gonna bless you, God. You satisfied with that? Yeah. That's what you. That's where you're gonna be. Yeah. And so you don't have enough. You got a little bit of, of fortification around you, but you don't have enough. Yeah. So when the devil makes an offer, remember that we're talking about the strategy of the enemy. He's gonna make an offer to you out of his kingdom. And so he's going to offer you just what you've seen in the dream from God, but because you didn't want a more revelation, you would take the devil's trick. Woo, come on. Okay, y'all, I'm going, I'm going too far here. Let's go with the last one. Okay. Example of a measure. I'll let you read that on your own. Matthew 25 is talking about the talents. Now, this is, the, this is to, to fortify your confidence in what this is saying. And the measure. Now the one he gave five talents to. The one he gave two. The one he gave one. Now the one who he gave five. Put in the efforts. Mm -hmm. To turn it into five more. Yeah. He was called a faithful servant. Mm -hmm. The other one. Put it out to. Uh, I think he put it. I don't know. Stock market or something. Yeah. Whatever he did. He did that, and he, he doubled what he had. Yeah. 
Okay? Because they felt like the five I got is not good enough. Yeah. I'm not satisfied with the Lord gave me this and I'm just going to hold this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm special to the Lord. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> you more than that. More than that. Unpackage that thing. Yes. Let's see what's inside the box. Hallelujah. Praise God. So they took the five and turned it into ten. That's the measure. Yeah. But the one had the one. He was satisfied with that. He was scared. He was fearful. Yeah. His measurement wasn't right. Mm -hmm. You should have knew. He had the knowledge that God is reaping where he don't sow. You had the understanding, but you did not have a, the right measure. Yeah. You did. It wasn't God's fault because he gave you understanding. This is what I'm saying about us. That's the measure. That's the example of measure. So close it right here. The word must be placed in you to bring forth kingdom fruit. Yes. All right, this is the last scripture. All right. Verse 26. Uh, we stand in Matthew chapter 4. Uh, verse 26. Go ahead and read that, whoever got it. He also said, this is what kingdom, this is what the kingdom of God is like. Yeah. A man scatters seed on the ground. Yeah. Night and day. Whether so what's the seed? The word. Okay, come on. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Stop. All right. Now, we're talking about kingdom principle. The word must be placed in you to bring forth kingdom fruit. So I want to say this. It's not good enough to hear the word at church. To hear somebody awesome on YouTube. To hear, you know, to read somebody's book and get, get a nugget. And don't do the necessary working because this is a parable. Remember, it's something that's parallel. He said that the, uh, uh, the, he cast the seed into the ground. Well, how did he get it into the ground if he didn't first dig the ground out? If he didn't make a, a bed for the seed, then if he didn't cover the seed up, then if he didn't water, then if he didn't make sure the weeds wasn't around, it was a whole lot of work that's involved with this. Yeah. And so it's not good enough just to hear and don't do nothing about it. Yeah. This is why we stay in a, a, a I don't want to say immature, we're not in a progressive movement towards perfection. Yeah. That's what I want to say. That's good. Because some of us, we're not just immature. We're just not moving at the pace that we should be towards perfection. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're stuck where you are. Amen. And you're not on a baby level, but you're still in grade school. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> All right? He said, so is the kingdom of God. If a man should cast the seeds into the ground. Listen. Then should go to sleep and rise day and night. And the seeds should spring, grow up, and you don't know how. So this is what I want to say, because this could have been a whole, this right here could have been a whole lesson. It takes time. It takes time. To get the word in your life in your heart to a point of production. It takes time. Notice he said, he went to sleep. See, even a farm, you're not a good farmer if you put corn in the ground think you're going to eat tomorrow. Right. You, man, come on, what are you doing? So likewise, this parallel is showing us. If you think just because you heard a good message, you're about to just do something. Or just because somebody says some, uh, some encouraging words to you, you're going to do something. Yeah. you got to get in that word. you got to rehearse it. you got to memorize it. you got to write it on a notebook. you got to say it on your uh, um, 
re voice recorder and play it on the way to work every day. Yeah. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Man, by the time you pay two weeks, that's true. That's true. Huh, you sure is ugly. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. It don't even affect you. Don't even affect you. Because I know pretty soon you coming to me for prayer. I already see it. It takes time. It takes effort. And then listen, the seed is going to spring. It's going to spring and grow. So those are different levels of it. To spring means you start to say stuff. It starts to come out of you. The, the, the corn comes out of the ground. That's the first indication that you got a good seed. It come out of you. But notice, out. notice right here, you don't know how that happens. Mm -hmm. So I want to just give you this nugget from this prayer. You was made put to produce kingdom fruit. Yes. That's the way your spirit and your makeup is. You had a divine nature that 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 oh, that is the supreme over your human nature. And it's made to produce kingdom fruit. Yes. I don't know how it happens. I don't know when it's going to happen. But if I stay in this word, if I know God said this to me, I keep reading the dream every day. Pretty soon. Something's going to pop out. I'm on, I'm on, instead of when that depression comes, uh, man, God is taking too long. I know I'm called to do this. I know I'm called to do this. They keep looking over me. Pretty soon you'll be like, oh, that's complaint. I'm not even going in that. Not even doing it. That's a sin against God. Yeah. As long as you want to take God, I'm here. I'm here. You just got to keep me living, so I guess I'm going to live a long time. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yes. It takes time, but after a while, it will bring forth the fruit. And so, when the fruit comes forth, and I'm skipping over to the end here. When the fruit comes forth, immediately what happens? Come on, y'all. Verse 29. When the fruit comes forth, immediately what happens? When the harvest comes. Yes. He puts the sickle to the corn. So this means that the whole purpose for God putting that word in you and giving you revelation and causing it to cultivate is so that he can use it in the earth. Yeah. Yeah. When, they, when he sickled the corn is that now it's going to be used as a production to feed somebody. Yeah. Yeah. To put it to use. So yeah. your good character, your love, your kindness. Your gentleness, yeah. your faith, your self-control. When that begins to come into a full thing, God get ready to use that. Yeah. Yes. God get ready to allow somebody to feed off of that. See, fruit is not fruit. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. It's a parable. It's a fruit parable. Fruit is not fruit. Yeah. It's a parable. The fruits of the Spirit. Okay. Do you have kindness? Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. 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 Kindness. Kindness. Gentleness. Gentleness. Faith. Yeah. That's what he wants to take off of you and feed it to somebody else to draw them into the kingdom. Yeah. To cause them to be strengthened. To cause them to be productive. To cause them to be useful to him. Yeah. Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. And there's so much more that you want to show us. I just pray, dear God, that you would help us have a hunger and a thirst for more to not be satisfied with the basics and the fundamentals, but to hunger for all that you would possibly reveal to us, yes. all that you would possibly share with us, all that you would cause us to come to know, all that you would cause us to come to experience in your kingdom. I pray for your church. I pray for your leaders. I pray for this whole house. Yes. That we would grow up strong in you yes. by your revelation of your truth. Yes, Jesus. We might be able to do those things and speak those things that be not as though they really were. Bless us as 
We end this session tonight. Let your name be glorified. Touch the one that's hurt. Touch the one that's going through right now. Give them comfort and peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Ooh, I kept y'all long tonight. <laughs>